Welcome to the 3-minute-ish guide to Balrog Heroic. This is the fifth encounter of the raid, but it's the second hardest boss in Firelands. This boss has very few mechanics, but dealing with them appropriately is extremely important, especially for tanks and healers. You want to bring 1-2 to two tanks on 10-man, 2 on 25-man, 2 healers on 10-man, and 5-6 to six on 25-man. The boss is quite a tight and rage timer, so keep that in mind when deciding your comp. Bringing two or more Shadow Priests can also make life a lot easier. Let's quickly talk about mechanics, and then I'll give you a blueprint on how to execute the fight. Tanks will have to deal with his high damage melee swings along with his two special blade attacks. Infernal Blade slows down his swings, but turns his auto attack damage into magical damage, and Decimation Blade always has 90% of the tank's health pool or a minimum of 250k damage if the tank has low health. This damage goes through all mitigation cooldowns like Wall, Pain Suppression, and Hand of Sacrifice, but it can be dodged and parried, and the damage can also be absorbed by AMS, Paladin Mastery, and Shields from a Priest. He'll do one out of the two blades every 47 seconds, and his first blade will always be Infernal Blade. While tanking, you'll passively get stacks of Blades of Glory, which increases your max health by 20% per stack, while also increasing the damage you take by 20%. This debuff is the reason why it's a good idea to have two tanks, and we'll talk more about why later. The other main mechanic is Shards of Torment, where he spawns one crystal on the ground in 10-man and two in 25-man roughly every 30 seconds. This shard will focus on whoever is closest to the target, do damage, and apply a stacking debuff, making the target take increased damage. When you stop taking damage, you get a debuff called Tormented, making you take 250% increased damage from shards and do 50% less healing. The debuff also spreads to nearby targets, so if you are a ranged player, it's important that you stay outside of the group when you have the debuff. While the crystal is channeling on a player, healing that player will also grant Vital Spark. How many stacks of Vital Spark you get will depend on how many stacks of Torment the Crystal Soaker has, but will start at 1 stack and ramp all the way up to 4 on 25-man, and on 10-man you'll get double the stacks of 25-man. The Spark gives you a reserve of 5% increased healing per stack, but the healing buff is inactive until you release it by healing the tank, and then you keep the buff for 15 seconds. Your Spark stacks remain for the entire fight, and we'll talk more about how to deal with this mechanic appropriately a bit later. The last mechanic is Countdown, which connects two random non-tank targets with the beam and getting within 4 yards of each other will remove the beam. If they don't connect within 8 seconds, you'll explode and wipe the raid. Those are all the mechanics, but now let's talk about how to execute the fight. Lust on pull and have your bloody case start on the boss while rolling some decent defensive cooldowns like Dancing Room Weapon, Bone Shield, Vamp Blood and an external or two. You want to have as many healers as possible on Vital Flame Sacking Duty at the start of the fight. On the first crystal spawn, you want to put your Shadow Priest on Soaking Duty. They will solo tank the entire first crystal. Once they get to 13 stacks, use an external cooldown like Hand of Sacrifice on each priest. Then at 20 stacks, no sooner, no later, they'll use Dispersion for the rest of the duration. After the first spawn, you'll have one ranged crystal and one melee crystal. The crystal in melee you will handle by having the whole melee team just strafe in and out, spreading the buff by taking one or max two stacks with debuff. You really don't have to pay much attention as a melee. In range, you want to have two people soaking each crystal and make sure to swap around 12 to 14 stacks. The goal of the healers is to get to around 80 to 100 stacks of the vital flame buff as quickly as possible to then maintain the healing buff for the rest of the fight. There are many ways of dealing with the healing assignments, but here's what I have found to work well. Assign each healer into an order. Have healer 1, 2, and 3 stack on the first crystal. After the crystal despawns, healer 1 and 2 release their stacks on the tank. Healer 3 keeps stacking on the next crystal, and Healer 4 joins in for the second round. On the third crystal, Healer 1 and 2 swaps with 3 and 4, and now they do their final bit of stacking. After the third crystal, they'll be at around 100 stacks and will now remain on the tank for the rest of the fight. Healer 3 and 4 will go back to healing on the fourth crystal, and will after that also be at around 100 stacks, and will keep the buff for the rest of the fight. Healer 5 and 6 will gain stacks passively and can be a bit more flexible when they choose to offload their stacks as their healing is not really needed on the tank. Speaking of the tank, I think the best strategy is to not have the off tank help with soaking crystals. Instead, have your main tank start on the boss, tank until the first infernal blade, then the off tank will take over the boss with defensives up in order to get enough stacks to be at 250k HP, which is usually 2 stacks. Then the main tank takes over again and the off tank will only ever take over for decimation blades. With his low health pool and the high healing increase on the healers, he'll get topped off extremely quickly between strikes from Decimation Blade. Your main tank will need to rotate small defensives pretty much at all times. Do not be afraid of calling for cooldowns like Pain Suppression and Barrier during his normal auto attack phase and Aura Mastery during his Infernal Blade. Mirror Broken Images on the main tank is pretty much a must, so go out and farm your dailies. Tank swap appropriately, manage healer stacks, utilize cooldowns, collect loot. And that's how you kill Bale Rock on Heroic. Subscribe for more 3-minute guides, and make sure to watch the rest of the guides on the screen right now.